In this video, we will talk about how do we find the confidence interval for a population per person. So what do you mean by proportion? Proportion is basically the percentage, right? For example, suppose I want to know or you want to study what is the percentage of the, uh, the female students in statistics class in a back okay so i want to know what is the percentage of the female students in the statistics class so in a back okay so to do that i don't want to go to each class and then count how many female students are there what i want to do is i want to pick a sample one class and then if i find the that class has 55 percent of female students then how do i use that sample data to find out the percentage of the female students in all statistics class. That's what we are going to do here, okay? So I want to be 90% confidence or 95%, 98%, 99% confidence, and then find out the uh, confidence interval for the percentage of the female students. This is one example, okay? So uh, let us first uh, write on some of the notation there. So the population proportion or the population percentage is denoted by P. And the sample proportion is denoted by p hat, okay, p hat. And also we will need another term that is q hat. q hat is the complement of p hat. That means one minus p hat is q hat. Example, suppose half of the population is female and a sample of 30 people, 14 were female. So which one is p and which one is p hat? Half of the population uh, is female, that means p, the population, the per percentage of the population or population proportion is one half. But the sample proportion is 30, 14 out of 30. Because in a sample of 30, 14 were female. The, so P hat is 14 over 30. And P is the population proportion or the population percentage. It is 1 half or 0.5. Okay. Next is example 2. A random sample of 200 workers. A random sample is given. N is given, right? So N is 200. So N is 200. Right? Workers found that 128 drove to work. Let's write x equals to 128. These are the number of people they drove to work out of 200. Okay, this is from the sample of 200. So find p hat. What is the formula for p hat? What is the what is the proportion that they drive to work? That will be 128 over 200. That is the proportion. Okay. So the proportion is just just use calculator. What do, how much do you get? 128 divided by 200. Right. So you get 128 divided by 200 is basically 0 0.64, 0 0.64, which is same as 64%, right? So this is the sample proportion. So the population proportion is not given here. It doesn't say anything about the population proportion, but it says find the p hat and q hat. So what will be q hat? q hat is one minus p hat, right? So then one is 100% minus 64% will be 36%, or you can add one minus 0.64 is 36.36 or 36 percent so this is how you find out the uh, sample proportion okay so the so our goal is we want to estimate population percentage or population proportion using the sample proportion okay so this is the formula so one minus alpha confidence interval for the population proportion is p hat is the sample proportion minus g alpha half we use exactly the same technique we used before to find out the confidence interval for the population mean when population standard deviation is given. If population standard is not given, we use T alpha half, but when it is given, we use G alpha half, okay? We use G alpha half and P hat Q hat is the uh, sample proportion and one minus uh, Q hat is one minus P hat over N is the sample size, okay? When n p n times p must be greater or equals to five, and n times q is also greater or equals to five. So if n times p is greater or equals to five, then this method works perfectly. That's what it says. And here e equals to g alpha half times that quantity is called error, margin of error. We denote by e. And similar to the previous uh, section, we find out the sample size from by solving this. Okay, we'll do that later. First of all, let us do some examples on how do we find out. The, uh, the confidence interval for population proportion, okay? Example number three, I want to do that. A survey conducted by Shelley May and Gallup of 1,404 respondents found that 
Three twenty-three students paid their education by student loans. What is M? The total sample size is fourteen o four. How many out of fourteen o four? How many students pay their education by student loans? So let's say x equals to three hundred twenty-three. So the p hat sample proportion is three twenty-three divided by fourteen o four. Okay. So how much is that? So three twenty-three divided by fourteen o four will be. Uh, divide by fourteen o four is basically zero point two three. So I got zero point two three. So what do we need here? We need p hat. We found p hat. Let's find out q hat as well. So q hat is one minus p hat, right? So that will be one minus zero point two three. Will be how much? That will be basically zero point seven seven, right? Zero point seven seven. We have p hat, q hat, and n. So the next thing we will need is G alpha half. What is the confidence level? Ninety percent, right? What we do here is do the ninety percent in the middle, right? So zero point nine in the middle. So what is left? Ten percent is left outside, right? So point one is left outside. Divide by two is that part. Point one divided by two will be point zero five. So this is point zero five. This is also point zero five, right? So this is G alpha half negative. This is because zero is in the middle. Positive g alpha half. How do I find out negative g alpha half? Alpha half is inverse norm. Inverse norm. Okay. And then the uh, left area is point zero five zero one because we are talking about g. So if you do that, you will get negative one point six four. That's what you get. So g alpha half is basically negative one point six four. So a uh, negative g alpha. So g alpha half will be positive one point six four. Because th this negative value is negative one point sixty four, so the positive value will be positive one point six four. Okay, now so to find out the confidence interval, let's plug in into the, into the formula. The formula is p hat is zero point two three minus one point six four, and then p hat q hat is point two three and point seven seven, and then divide by n is root under. Uh, this is under the root. Everything is under the root. Okay. So that will be fourteen o four, fourteen o four, comma. The same thing with plus sign. Point twenty three plus one point sixty four, and then point twenty three, uh, point seven seven over fourteen o four. Remember that this root is for top and bottom both. Okay, and then you close the interval. So if you use calculator, what do you get? Let us use calculator for that. We get point twenty three point two three minus one point six four, right? And then times square root. This has square root, and then point twenty three times point seven seven divide by fourteen o four fourteen o four. That's what you get. Okay, this is what you get. And if you hit enter, point two one one five. That is the left value is zero point two one one five. That is twenty one point fifteen percent. In the sample, we got twenty three percent use the uh, student pay the student uh, so education by the student loan, right? In the sample, twenty three percent students pay their students pay their education by student loan. But in the population, we want to find out the confidence interval. So. The lower limit will be twenty one point one five percent. So for upper limit, you do you copy the same thing. Second and then inter will copy the everything. Now what I want to do is I want to change the sign that minus sign to plus sign. Okay, so that will become plus and hit enter. Twenty four point eight four. That's what you get. So you get twenty four point eight four. That's what you get. Okay. So this is the ninety percent confidence interval. What does that mean? That means we are ninety percent, ninety percent confidence that between twenty one point fifteen percent and twenty four point eight four percent. I'm sorry that this decimal goes here because this is in the decimal form, not in the percentage form. Let me remove that one. Okay, twenty four point eight four. Okay. So if you want to write in the percentage, that it will be twenty one point one five percent and twenty four point eight four percent. If you write in the decimal, then point two one one four five two four point two four eight four. Okay. Now, what does that mean? Is uh, we are ninety percent confidence that 
between 21.15 and 24.84 percent of the students pay their education by student loans or if you pick sample many many samples uh, then 90 percent of the samples have sample proportion lie between these two numbers that's what you say okay so if you want to do you can do we can do these things directly by using calculator without doing all this work you can do it directly using calculator how do you do that go to stat test and one proportion z interval let us see that so it stat test one proportion z interval okay let me clear everything let me go to stat and then uh, sorry uh, not second stat test uh stat test and then one proportion g interval not g test one proportion g interval is that one number h okay one proportion g interval hit enter it asks what is x x is 323 right so three two three that is x what is n 1404 1404 that's what we have listed here right and x and then what is the level of confidence level of confidence you want to know is 90 percent right so go down and then do the 90 percent so nine zero ninety percent and then hit uh, go down and then hit enter what do you get is 0 0.2115 and then 0 0.2484 0 0.2485 so it is two five two one one six if you round up to the fourth decimal place and two uh, point two four eight five so we got almost the same value. Why did I get a little bit different? Because when I divide 323 over 1404, I just took two decimal, but you get more values. I, I left some of the values after the decimal. That's why I am not getting exactly the same answer. So in the exam, so you, you must choose the one that is closest one. Okay. You must pick the closest one. All right. Let us do another example. So first of all, we we'll list the given things and then we will decide whether we will, uh, I will do by hand or by using calculator directly. Okay. Number four, A. The national average for the percentage of high school graduates taking SAT is 49%. So what is that? That is P. Uh, P. Uh, so 49%, but the state average vary on, uh, vary from low 4% to a high 92%. It looks like it is just giving you, okay, some information about the population. So P is given as 0 0.49. This is the national average, average of all the population, okay. But what it says is state-wise, it is different. The lowest can be 4%, highest can be 92%. That is the state-wise, okay. Now, a random sample, now it is giving the sample, a random sample of 300, N is 300. Graduating high school seniors was polled across a particular tri-state area and it was found that 195 x equals to 195 This is just given you It will uh, it will add some questions. Okay, and then uh, it, it will discuss about that later So uh, in a sample of 300 195 were taking the set uh, set test Okay, estimate the true proportion of high school graduates in which region in this region who take the SAT 95% uh, with 95% confidence. So this is the national poll. But you want to find out the confidence interval of the population in the tri-state area. Not the national poll. National poll is known, but you want to find out the confidence interval only for the tri-state area. This is the values, okay? What is the uh, confidence interval? Confidence interval is uh, 95%. That is the confidence interval, okay? So how do I do that? So you need to find out P hat first. What is P hat? 195 over, uh, sorry, yeah, 195 over 300. How much is that? 195 over 300 will be, 300 is uh, 0 0.42, 0 0.42. Uh, uh, 195 divided by 300 is 0 0.65, uh, 0 0.65. Okay, what will be Q hat? Q hat will be 1 minus P hat, right? 1 minus 0 0.65. How much is that? 0 0.35. That's Q hat. Okay, what else do I need? I need, uh, in the formula, the formula is like this, right? P hat minus G alpha half under the root P hat Q hat times Q hat divided by N. And then we have the same thing with plus sign, right? With plus sign. So we, we have P hat, we have Q hat, we have N is 300. Now we need G alpha half. 
Again, the similar way, we will find out the G alpha half. So the confidence is 0.95 is in the middle. So the outside will be 0.5, 5%, 0.05, uh, right? 0.05. So let me, 0.05, right? But you need to divide that into two ends, right? So that is divided by two will be 0.025. So that will be 0.025. This will be 0 0.025. So you need to find out negative G alpha half because 0 is in the middle. And this is positive G alpha half. Okay. How do I find negative G alpha half? G alpha half will be inverse norm 0 0.025. You will get negative 1.96. That's what you will get if you use calculator inverse norm. Okay. And then what is the value of G alpha half? Then G alpha half will be 1.96. Now we use that formula, right? So what is p hat? 0.65 minus 1.96 under the root 0.65 times 0.35 divide by 300. And then, and then do the same thing with plus sign in the middle. Okay. So if you do that, you will get, uh, let me see what you get. Okay. 0.65. Let me let me find out that so let me clear that 0 0.65 0 0.65 minus 1.96 oh 1.96 right 96 times under the root square root 0 0.65 times 0 0.35 right and then divided by 300 under the root as well so if you do that what do you get you will basically get 0 0.5960. The lower bound is 0 0.5960. The upper bound is the same value with positive sign, right? So what you do, just second and then enter and then change that negative sign in the middle to the positive sign. If you do that, what do you get? So let's make it positive or plus and hit enter. That is 7039. And also there is 7. So you can do 7, 0, 4, 0. You can do that, right? Because if you round it up, it will be 0. And then that will be uh, 10. That will be 4, right? You can do 7, 0, 4, 0, right? In terms of the percentage, it will be 59.60% and 70.40%, okay? Does this 49, does this national average is included in this interval? No. This national average is not uh, included in this. What, what, what can we say about this tri-state area? The average, the population average in the tri-state area is bigger than the national average. You see that? Because the sample was 65%, right? So the sample was 65%. So in this tri-state area, you can say that the percentage of the high school graduates who take the SAT test is higher than the national average. Because national average is 49%. But in this tri-state area, we got the 95% confidence. We are 95% confidence that the average in the tri-state area is bigger than the national average. That's what we find. Now, I want to do this directly using calculator. Okay. How do I do that? Go to the calculator and then go to the stat test. And then you can, uh, you can just find out. You can just scroll up or down to find out. One proportion G interval. See number eight. Hit enter. Uh, X. What is X? 165, right? Uh, 195, not X65. 195, okay? And then what is the N? N is 300. The total sample size was 300. And what is the confidence level? 95, right? 0.95. And then hit, uh, the, just calculate and hit enter. You get 0 0.5960. 0 0.5960. And then seven, uh, 7040. Or... 70379. So it is picking five decimal, but you don't have to tick, uh, pick five decimal. You can pick just a four decimal places. All right. This is how you get this. All right. Next is example number 4B. It has been reported that 20.4% of incoming freshmen indicate that they will major in business or related field. So this is the population because it didn't say anything about sample. Now a random sample. This is the sample. Okay, a random sample of 390, that is n equals to 390. Incoming college graduates, freshmen were asked their preference and 
102. X equals to 102. Consider business as a measure. Estimate the true percentage of the freshman business measure with 96% confidence. Okay, so it is 96%. So what else do we need? Confidence interval is 96%, right? So you will do 96 in the middle. So 4%, 0 0.04 is outside. So that is 0 0.02, half of that. And that is 0 0.02. So to find out negative G alpha half, you do inverse norm and then 0 0.02, right? Uh, G alpha half, 0 0.96, okay? So you do, to find out that, inverse norm, 0 0.02 and then 0 comma 1. You do that way. And then after you do, after you find a G alpha half, just use the same formula. So you can do this by yourself, okay? It is very similar. Now, similar to the uh, confidence interval for mean, we can find the sample size for the proportion as well. So how? Because as I mentioned earlier, what is called the margin of error? The error E is denoted by G alpha half and then under the root P hat Q hat divided by N is the formula to find out the error E. Now if you want to solve for N, how do you do that? You square on both sides. Let's square on both sides. You get E square equals to G square alpha half and then P hat Q hat over N because square of root is just uh, just that thing, right? And multiply both sides by N. Multiply both sides by N. That N and N will cancel out. And divide by E square. Divide by E square. So what do you get? N equals to G square alpha half times P hat Q hat over E square, right? Because when you square, you'll get E square as well. You are dividing by E square. So basically you got uh, N equals to G square alpha half times P hat Q hat over E square square that's what you get but since this and that has square i'm writing we inside one parenthesis and writing a single square that is also perfectly fine okay sometimes the sample proportion sample percentage will not be given in that case you assume that p hat is 0 0.5 okay sometimes sample proportion are not given in that case you assume that the sample proportion is 50 percent okay let us do a couple examples on this a researcher wishes to estimate with 95% confidence. So what is the confidence interval? Is 95%. So when you make that curve, that 95 goes in the middle, right? The proportion of people who own home computer. A previous study showed that 40% of those uh, interviewed had a computer at home. That is for the previous study, okay? Uh, the researcher wishes to be accurate within 2%. So the previous study is basically it is the sample study. Okay. This is from the sample study. I mean, it is not very clear. So you can say that a previous study on sample, on sample, so that 40% of these interviewed had a computer at home. The researcher wishes to be accurate within 2% of the true proportion, find the minimum sample size necessary okay so you want to find out n equals to what so what is p hat p hat is given as 0 0.40 this is the study from a sample previous sample okay so q hat will be 1 minus p hat that is 0 0.60 and then uh so what is the error error is given two percent right so it is 0 0.02 so how do i find out n n is uh by the way first of all let's find out g alpha half okay let's find out g alpha half so to find out g alpha half that 95 percent is in the middle okay that is the remaining five percent is on the two end points right so 0 0.05 divided by 2 is 0 0.025 so this part is 0 0.025 and that part is 0 0.025 as well so g alpha half is here negative g alpha half positive g alpha half is here there, there is zero in the middle okay so how do i find a negative g alpha half is inverse norm okay 0 0.025 and then 0 1 if you do that you'll get negative 1.96 so g alpha half is 1.96 so the formula is you can use this formula or that formula either one is good okay let me use the formula that i derive you'll get exactly the same thing so 1.96 square times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 over 
0.02 square that is error so don't write 2 because it is percentage so you need to write into decimals there right so how do you get that you can use calculator for that so 1.96 square okay so that is 1.96 square times 0.4.4 times 0.6.6 and then divide by oh oh not not divide there it is times there right so times 0.6 divide by 0 0.02 0 0.02 and the square of that right if you do that you will get 2304 so 0.96 so it is it is 2304.96 since this is the sample size you always round up so 2305 so this many sample is necessary if you want to be just within 2% of the true proportion that's how you find it okay so let us do example number six a recent study indicated that 29% of 100 women over age 55 in the study were uh, widows so we are talking about the women who are 55 or above about 29% of the 100 women so what does that mean that means n is n is 100 right what is x x is 29% of 100 right so 29% of 100 well, of 100 is how much this will be basically 29 over 100 that i remove the percent off means times 100 so that is basically 29 right so x is 29 and how large a sample must be taken n equals to what n is asked if you want to be 90 percent confident so confidence interval is or confidence level is 90 percent 0.9 so how do i do find out z alpha half again so 0.9 so 5% uh, is on the left, 0 0.05, 5% is on the right, 0 0.05, negative z alpha half, positive z alpha half, 0 is in the middle. So if you do inverse norm 0 0.05, you will get uh, negative z alpha half will be 1.64 because negative z alpha half, you will get negative 1.64. Now you use the formula, n equals to z alpha half is square, 1.64 is square, right? times p hat what is p hat p hat is x over n you will get 0.98 uh, sorry 0 0.29 0 point <coughs> so you'll get 0 0.29 okay 0 0.29 and then another is q hat will be 1 minus p hat because p hat will be uh 29 percent so 29 over 100 that is 0.29 so q hat will be q hat will be 1 minus p hat that will be 0.71 okay so 0.71 divided by so what is the uh, convent that the estimate is within 0 0.05 so it should be within 0 0.05 from the true proportion means the error the maximum error allowed is 0 0.05 0 0.05 square okay if you use calcul calculator excuse me for this you will get so 1.64 square times 0.29 times 0.71 okay and then divided by 0 0.05 square if you do that you will get 221.51 okay so 221.51 that will be basically 222 almost because whenever you get some decimal number in the sample size you always round up all right if no estimate for the sample proportion is given here the sample proportion was given as 29 or 0 0.29 right if no estimate would be was given then you would use p hat would be 0 0.5 so q hat will be 1 minus p hat right will be 0 0.5 as well so g alpha half we got 90 percent so g alpha half is the same as that g alpha half so g alpha half will be 1.64 in that case the sample size will be uh, 1.64 square right and initial 0.29 you have 0.5 and other is also 0.5 p hat q hat over 0 0.05 square what do you get if you use calculator i want to just copy that thing okay second and then enter so what is changed here everything is same only the difference is that 29 is changed to 0.50 right 
and then that 71 is also changed to 50. If you do that, you will get 268.96. So 268.96, that is the sample size must be at least 269. This is how we find out the sample size in case of the proportion. Okay guys, so this is the end of section 7.4. Thank you.